Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and repair this blood pressure monitor here. So I got it from eBay, it only cost 99p, but I did have to pay £3.65 for the postage because the box is quite big. Now it does say here that it's not working for parts and then in the description it says... Display partially comes on, but then the machine does not measure constrict the arm as it did before. So let's pop some batteries into this and see if that is true. So I got this purely because I thought it'd be quite interesting to see the inside of it. I already have a blood pressure monitor and uh, it's amazing the amount it does constrict your arm, considering it's just run from a couple of batteries. Okay, so here it is here. Right, so it does just work on the wrist, not the arm. Needs a bit of a clean. Battery compartment looks a bit dirty, but it's okay. A slight little sign of corrosion just up here, but nothing too bad. Okay, so the display came on there. Let's just take off my watch. And let's go. Okay, I can feel it pumping up. Yeah, it's definitely getting tighter. Still getting tighter. Oh, it failed. What does it say here? Error. So it's come up with error here. So it got tighter and then uh, it just seemed to it seemed to fail. I mean it felt pretty tight to me, but it just seemed to fail. Then let's try it again. Let's do it, let's do it even tighter on my wrist. There we go. It does say to put it underneath as well. Wrap cuff securely on the left of the wrist, so it's showing palm up. Palm upwards, sit up right. Wrist cuff height level should be the same as the heart, so at this level here. Press stop start button to start measurement automatically. Let's try that again. I can hear him. Listen. Oh, do you know what? I didn't think. Ah, oh, it's going to be like a balloon, isn't it? Which has a hole in it. I don't think this is going to be repairable. Uh, yeah, that's not going to be, it's going to have a leak. I thought it may be something more, I thought it might be more kind of electronic or something, but uh, I think it's physically got a leak because I, I heard air coming out of it. Anyway, look, the main thing is that I want to see the inside of this. I've only spent whatever it was, £4 something, so it's not a huge amount of money. I'd like to see how something small can grip so uh, so tightly. So let's open it up. It looks like we've got two little Phillips screws here. I think this one's just going to be interesting to see the inside off. Now in case you haven't watched my videos before, they're called trying to fix because a lot of times I can't fix them. I'm not an expert in these repairs and I try all different things. So although I've been doing it for quite a while now, if I was doing the same thing all the time, then I suppose I would become an expert in the item. But I mix things up quite a bit on this channel. Well, maybe apart from Nintendo Switches, I do seem to keep coming back to them. So uh, yeah, I've never, obviously I've never taken one of these apart before, so I don't know how it works. And that's the exciting part for me. Okay, so that's just a button there. Looks like we've got a little motor here. Oh, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting to see how the inside of this works. Oh, and another motor here as well. Or oh, maybe this isn't a motor this side then. That's definitely a motor that side. Oh, I wish it was like a mechanical problem rather than the fact that it's leaking air. So leaking air must mean that's something in here, the kind of... the. Uh, the balloon in here, or whatever it would be called, obviously has a hole in it, which is a real shame. So it must be here to here, the balloon. That section. Anyway, let's strip this thing down. Can't even see how to take it apart from here. Huh. 
How did that go in? Oh, is this the thing that measures the air then? Is this the measures the pressure? I'd love to know how this works. So look, we've got a load of tubes here. So this is the motor. Then we've got tubes. Maybe this is the thing that measures the actual pressure then. Then that goes onto the board here. A little crystal there, some capacitors. Right, so this one's labelled up as battery. This one is labelled up as RL. Not sure what that means. And this has got M for motor. Let's undo all these. Now I've got to make sure, so basically each of them have like the points sticking up. You see the uh, the ridge sticking upwards. Right, so that all looks nice. So I think all that is going to be working fine. That must be, look, that's the, that's the thing going through here to the actual, let's call it a balloon. But uh, that's what's going to be doing the measuring, isn't it? That component there. Right, so what's all this about here then? What do we need all this for? What is this attached to? This seems to be like independent of uh, independent of this. So what's all this for? This is obviously how, how it pumps. Oh, and this is how you pump it up this side here. So this side pumps it up and this side measures it. And this is just to screw all together. So if we undo this screw, maybe this will come off. I'm already liking this. Is that gonna come off now? No, there's probably another screw somewhere else. So let's take out this then and unhook it from here. There we go. So if I put power into here, oh look, I can see a little bit of uh, water damage there. If I put power into here, we should feel air coming out of here. Now I wonder with the way it's geared, whether it would be powerful enough to actually pump up, let's say a balloon with this tiny little motor. Because I mean, it really does constrict your wrist very tightly. Would there be enough power there with the way it's geared to uh, probably take ages, but to blow up an actual kid's balloon, you know? Don't know what this is for here. I don't know what this is for here. So this must be to say when it's full, would it be? You know, to stop pumping more air in? Not sure. All right, let's see if we can find out what the fault is. And then uh, we'll worry about the rest. So I think it just clips in there, doesn't it? A little clip there, and a little clip here. Oh yeah, there's a clip here and a clip here as well. out there there we go excellent now that should come is that going to come apart or not right okay so if you could buy the cuffs then this would be this would be replaceable, but I don't think you can. I'm just going to put my mouth on here just to blow into it, just to see what it does. I'm going to block this one up now. Blow into this one. Yeah, it's got a it's got a leak, so I'm just going to put up to the microphone so you can hear it. Yeah, so you can hear that little there. Uh, not me, not the lips around there, but you can hear like this. Right, so that's definitely the problem. So I think what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to unstitch this. Now, what's the easiest way to do this? Right, so it goes all the way to here and all the way to here. It's not just this bit here. It goes around here. So I think I'm going to unpick this end bit because we have quite a lot of movement here. Then I might be able to get this hard bit out and it might all come out. And this tool again, this is what I use to unpick the seams 
on the uh, Andy Pan, not on the Andy Pandy, on the uh, Womble and stuff like that, you know, the pull string toys. So uh, you can get them for a couple of pounds off eBay, they're not expensive. And the idea is you put the seam in there and that little blade in the middle cuts it. So not this part, the part in there. So let's try and do the very edge here. I'm just going to start from one side. There you go, just in there like that, and it just cuts it. And now you see, because I've cut it, I should be able to just pull them through each one. Be interesting to see if this comes out in one go or is it somehow glued on the inside. There we go. Excellent, I've got it out. Right, so there's going to be a hole in this somewhere, isn't there? So can we pull this out completely? Yes, we can. Where is this hole? Right, let's blow it up. I can't find where the actual leak's coming from. 100% there's a leak. Uh, when I blow through here, it feels like a little bit of cold air is coming up on my nose. So I think it might be actually from the seal around the edge here, but I'm not too, I'm not too sure because that should go right the way to the edge. So I'm just wondering, does it need sealing round here better? Which would be very good for me because it means it might be fixable. Uh, what I'm going to do is, just off camera, I'm going to get a bowl of water and I'm going to put this in it and I'm going to blow it up and I'm going to see if my uh, wife or kids can see where the actual leak is coming from. Right, my son's seen it straight away. That's the good thing about using water because you can see the air bubbles come through and it's not here at all. It's here, look, just along the edge here. Can you see the hole? Just there. Yeah. So the problem is now, as far as I'm concerned, that's not repairable because it's on a seam. If it was in the middle here, I could put a bicycle repair patch on and that would seal it, but I won't be able to seal around the corners with this big groove here because all the air is just going to come along and go out the groove here. And remember as well, this inflates, so it has to be able to be moved, because when you blow it up, well look, air's escaped, but you can see that it, hold on. There you go, look, can you see it has to inflate quite big? So do you know what I'm thinking about doing? Which will probably ruin it completely, but look, it looks like it's kind of been like heat seams to begin with. So I'm wondering if I get my soldering iron on the lowest heat possible, I'll have to check what that is, I think it's 100 degrees Celsius. I'm wondering if I was just to rub it along there, would that be enough to melt the plastic back together? Because it is only a tiny hole. And if not, if I completely ruin it, well I've got to do a complete bodge with hot glue and some sort of patch anyway. So, uh, I think I might try to solder in iron first of all, just to see what happens. Right, the lowest temperature my iron will go to is 200 degrees. I'm wondering if it's going to burn straight through it. So I think to test it, I'm going to just go on to this edge bit here, because this bit's not used over here anyway. So let's just see now That's what's going to happen, see if the whole thing goes up in flames. Let's have a look at that. Hmm, not sure. I mean, I wonder, would it be possible to try to cut a little bit of this off, put it on here and all melt it together? Right, so I've just uh, done that there so I know where I'm going. Let's give it a go. Right, I think that's made it much, much bigger. Just blow into it. No, it's still coming through. Try it again. Do you know what I'm going to do? I am going to cut a bit of the end and I'm going to see if I can fill it up. See if I can fill the hole. 
let's just cut a little bit off here. See if I can melt that into there at all. Just going to see if that's made any difference. <laughs> you won't believe it. It's actually sealed it. What? Well, I'm going to give it loads of blows, but that at this moment in time has sealed it. Listen, I'm going to blow into it and you, hopefully you won't hear it hissing out. No, it's hissing out again. Okay, so it only worked for one blow and now it's hissing out again. Right, I'm going to uh, try that again. No, it's coming through at a much faster rate now. Well, I've had one more, more idea before I do the glue gun. What I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to apply hot air and I'm going to try to force down this bit here when it's hot to see if that will somehow seal up the gap. So I'm going to put the hot air to 150 degrees Celsius. Let's see if this will do anything. Right, I can see it's gone shiny, so that must have melted a bit. Right, let's see if that's done anything. No, it hasn't, no. Could be wrong though, but I think there's just a little hole in it now. I'm going to try that again. Right, it's better, but it's still, there's still a bit of a, a hole there. I'm going to try to use a little bit more from here. See if that will melt into it. That's melting nicely now.
Right, so you can see I'm trying to fill it with plastic. Right, amazingly, that has sealed, but I'm going to let it cool. I might need to do that a few more times. But you can see the plastic's like melted into where the hole was. So I'm actually surprisingly pleased with how that has gone. I suppose by doing this thing with heat, it's acted like an iron, maybe the same way that they sealed it originally by putting something very hot down. It sticks both sides together. So uh, I don't want to put it all back together for it to fail after using it for the fifth go. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm just going to take 10, 15 minutes out. So I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to keep blowing it up letting the air out, blowing it up, letting the air out, just to see if it fails, because if it fails after five or six goes, there's no point in putting it back together. Success, I have been blowing that now really, really hard, as, as, as hard as I can physically do it, and it's not getting anywhere near there because it's sealed here. So this, the way it's sealed is here, you can see the flat bit. This bit is not inflating, but it still inflates all around it. So now it can't actually get to where the hole was because it's stuck down before that. So I think, unless this is going to generate much more puff than me, which uh, you can tell I'm out of breath, which uh, could be possible, then uh, I might put it together and it might go pop. But uh, I think I think that's going to be okay. Well, I'm thinking about it, there's no point in me stitching it up now if it's not going to work because for me that's going to be the hardest part in the stitching. Remember it's only cosmetic here, that's got nothing to do with the inflation of it. So why don't I put it fully back together now, test it and then if it works I can worry about stitching that up. Right, so here goes, let's put it on and see what happens. So again, we've got to do it underneath, I believe. And up here. Now let's see if it's gonna work. So uh, I haven't done my blood pressure in probably about six months, but when I was doing it for a while, because I have got a, a similar machine, but it's actually got a cuff that you put around the top of your arm here. My blood pressure, I wasn't, it's not necessarily high, but it isn't great either. So the top number here, I think ideally it should be around 120 over 80 or below. And I think mine was always about 120 something over 80 something or sometimes up to 90. This bottom one for here was often, uh, was often high for me. Well, high, I mean, you know, not high for people that have high blood pressure, but not ideal either. Here we go. Let's see if it's going to work. Right, I can feel it inflating. It's getting tight. And it's keeping it. Look, you can see the pulse going. It's keeping the pressure there. I can feel my pulse in my in my hand now here. All right now it's gone. It's easing up. Excellent. Right, a hundred and jeez, hundred and forty-nine over ninety-nine with a ninety-seven pulse. Uh, oh, wow, okay, that doesn't seem great, does it? Hope, I'm hoping that's a dodgy machine. Let me just check my pulse a minute, just to see if it is that high. My pulse often does run high, that's why I'm sort of more on the skinny side. Right, let me just take my pulse and just to see what it is. Wow, okay, well I've just done 30 seconds and it was 47. So 47 over 30 seconds is, 47 is 94. So, uh, will this bring up my last one now? No, I don't wanna do that. Okay, so 97 wasn't really far out, was it? Turn it off. I'm gonna stitch it up. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll take another reading later on. Ideally, I'm slightly out of breath at the moment. Ideally, I should have my arm level with my chest. So I'll sit down properly later and do this, but let's get this stitched up and then uh, we'll get another reading at the end of the video. Right, so I've doubled up the thread for strength. Then down at the bottom, I've doubled it and tripled it for this bit and then tied a knot. So there's gonna be a nice knot hidden on the inside of here. 
So to begin with, I think I'm just going to start on, I think I'll start on this side and I'll put the knot on the inside. Now I'm just going to try to go through the same holes as before. So there we go, that's it all stitched up now. It doesn't look good, but saying that, it is strong as far as the stitching is concerned. It just doesn't look professional whatsoever. But it's going to do the job of holding it together, which is the main thing. So what we're going to do to finish the video now is let's do it on myself and also my wife. Historically, she's always had a lower pulse than me and also a lower blood pressure as well. So then if it registers that she's lower and I'm higher, then there must be a slight bit of accuracy to it. So let's do that now. So we pop two cushions on our lap here to bring the arm level up, the wrist level, in line with the heart, which is what they recommend. So I'm going to take my wife's reading first and then we'll do mine. My wife should be lower than me. Let's see how accurate this thing is. Right, there you go. So that's 111 over 72 and 54 uh, which looks pretty good doesn't it that does look pretty good so maybe I do have a little bit of an issue with myself let's see what I'm reading now so my arms higher up right, and mine is 138 over 84 with a 91 pulse so you can see mine is quite a bit higher. So I'm just going to fast forward through this bit now. I'm going to take my wife's again and do mine again just to see if the figures are any bit similar. Right, there you go. So that is pretty similar, isn't it? 109 over 71 over 60. So it does look quite consistent. Okay, and mine's showing 145 over 97 and again a high pulse of 96. So it does look like, I don't know how accurate it is, but it's definitely picking up that my wife is a lot lower, lower blood pressure and pulse than myself. So I think my mate Vince needs to do a bit more exercise and possibly eat a bit healthier. Uh, that's a lot higher than it ever was on my one. Then again, I don't know how accurate this is, but what I do know is it's definitely picking up a difference between different pulses and different blood pressures. But anyway, never mind. I'll have to consider what to do about that. But as far as a fix is concerned, what a great spend of £4.70 or £4.60, whatever this thing was. So now I know how the inside of this works. I still just need to know what the little cylinder was and what the square thing is. Obviously, it must be to measure when it's fully inflated, but uh, I don't quite know why there's two of them there. Or maybe is one of them to do with a pulse or something like that. But either way, what a nice little gadget on the inside and a nice little fix by using the hot air and that metal pry tool to act like an iron. So yeah, I, I enjoyed this one, even if the result is that maybe I'm possibly more unhealthy than I thought. Uh, but it's always better to know these things because then it gives you a chance to do something about it. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.